Chapter 9, Fighting Back Jews knew the truth about death camps, yet they continued to leave on transport trains. What else could they do? For the most part, they had no weapons, no training, and no way to fight the huge German army. But Jews didn't just go meekly off to their deaths. All along, from the very beginning of the ghettos, many Jews acted to save themselves and others. Some went into hiding. Thousands of young adults escaped from ghettos into nearby forests. They formed resistance groups to stop Nazi plans. They had few supplies and little food. But somehow, they destroyed Nazi rail lines. They blew up power stations. Non-Jews resisted as well. One entire village in France, La Chambron sur Linguon, hid 5,000 people, more than half of them Jews. In some instances, seeing what unspeakable things the Nazis were doing brought out the best in people. Oskar Schindler was an unlikely hero. He had joined the Nazi party in 1939 when he was 30. He took advantage of anti-Jewish laws by buying a Jewish-owned factory in Poland. There, he used the Jews from the nearby ghetto as forced laborers. But Schindler wound up saving those workers, more than a thousand Jews. How did he do that? He used part of the factory to make weapons. The Jews in Schindler's factory seemed like they were doing work that helped Nazis in the war. This may sound wrong, but these workers would not be sent off to death camps because the Nazis needed them. Plus, Schindler fooled officials. He gave them fake numbers for how many weapons his workers made. They actually made very few. At one point, Schindler's factory produced just one load of ammunition in about eight months. What else did he do? Schindler drew up a list of workers' names and skills changing ages and saying that doctors and lawyers were mechanics whose work was highly valued. Schindler spent all his money bribing SS officers and buying his workers clothes, food, and medicine. He died in 1974, penniless and alone, but his people, as he called them, brought his body to Israel to be honored and buried there. One entire country stood up to Hitler. Although an occupied country under Hitler's control, Denmark refused to let the Nazis take its Jewish citizens. More than 7,000 Jews, along with non-Jewish family members, were smuggled in fishing boats to Sweden and safety. There were revolts in concentration camps, even at killing centers. In Treblinka, Prisoners seized weapons, set buildings on fire, and ran for their lives. About a hundred survived. At Auschwitz, prisoners blew up a furnace room. The most famous story of resistance concerns the end of the Warsaw Ghetto. By fall of 1942, only 65,000 of the original half-million Jews were still living there. The council chairman committed suicide in the summer, rather than write lists of people to be sent off and killed. In January 1943, Nazi SS troops came through the gates to round up 8,000 people for death camps. However, a surprise was waiting for them. An army of Jews fought back. They were mostly young men and women. There weren't many, and they had few weapons and supplies. But they managed to kill many Germans so the Nazi troops retreated. Inside the Warsaw Ghetto, more Jews joined the resistance, 700 in all. Young, old, men, women, they built hiding places. They linked sewer tunnels so people could move from place to place unseen. They made weapons. Finally, on April 19th, the Nazis came back. This time, they had more soldiers, tanks, and machine guns. Even so, the Jews refused to give up. The fighting lasted for four weeks. In the end, the Nazi burned every building to the ground. The ghetto fighters had nowhere to run. 
Many died. Those captured were sent to the Treblinka death camp. Only a few dozen escaped, but the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising inspired others. It stood as a symbol of great courage against evil.